open skirt. Amorak and TG Froze versus a team we have yet to see play here, Stone Knight and Laven. Two players that perhaps need no introduction again. Yeah, these uh, the Sorceress and Ninja Kamo, who we saw last week, we saw Ninja, uh, Laven come out with his DP set, and it did pretty well for him in the beginning, but once he got toward, higher up in the bracket, it kind of fell apart. Yeah, they were interesting here. I don't know if that play style is going to work as well as Laven wants to against the damage coming out of TG Frozen Amorak, but we will see. Laven and Stone Knight quali almost qualified on Team DTF last week, but failed to qualify in this quarterfinal round, and they have another shot now. Yep, they have another shot to qualify. Let's see if they can make it through this time. We will see here. I am still in shock from that 1v2 from Amorak in his first round. Let's that see if that prowess epic. is going to show itself once Ooh. again. As Laven just gets in there, CCs Amorak, but does no damage <laughs> at all. Zero damage. But gets grabbed for his trouble here now. Laven's on the ground. Stone Spoon's out in V. And Laven's now tanking up both members of the team, CCing and bouncing around here. But he isn't they taking cannot any damage. damage him. They just full comboed him and got him down to about 80% of his HP. Yep, Laven here proving the DP ninja as something to watch out for. There's nothing that they're doing to him. He's just taking CC and sitting there, not really showing that they're able to burst him down here. But Stone Knight is without his V. Yep, Stone Knight is going to be up to Stone Knight. This is the flaw with their composition that has uh, uh, got them knocked out previously, is that it, it puts all of the pressure on Stone Knight. If Stone Knight gets caught and dies, the match is, the match is over. Laven just cannot take out his opponents. Even if it takes them a year to take him out, he cannot take another person out. Oh, Stone Knight! Oh, Stone Knight's on the ground. He has no V here, and he gets eliminated by TG Froze, leaving Laven in the ill-fated 1v2. It might take them the rest of the match to kill him, but I don't foresee Laven 1v2ing in this situation. He might, though. Yeah, unless he takes time to swap out his gear, potentially, put on a little bit more AP, uh, change it up somehow, but it, with the DP set currently, I don't see uh, him... <laughs> being able to take out his Well, let's see, he gets a Serpent Ascension, gets knocked down by the Red Moon, and his V is forced. He did get the grab. It looks like me. he did start to take a little bit more damage there. I wonder if he actually did swap out some gear, um, in which case he might have a chance if he can isolate a target here. The 80% HP tick did come into play, which actually is going to be... Uh, normally, it goes in favor of the player against the 1v2, but no, he's got the CC onto Amar, but gets cc by the Mayo in the background, and yes, gets taken out. Looks like he did swap out his gear, uh, but he didn't. He wasn't able to evade enough CCs to stay alive and take him out. Yep, Laven, the CC magnet here, he took basically every CC that was possible to take in that matchup. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, he did it. I mean, he did a great job uh, getting CCs and kind of soaking damage. But as soon as they realized the strategy and realized, oh, we should just go for the Sorceress, uh, the Sorceress has very little room to mess up because they are essentially in a 1v2 with potential lucky CC on the side. All right, let's see if Stone Knight's going to be able to avoid getting killed here because I think uh, Poof and Skirt has correctly identified the fact that Stone Knight is all of the damage on this team. So if they tunnel vision him, where is their Mewa? Oh, there he is. TG Froze is there, and, and Amorak pops out of stealth, tries to get CC here, but does not end up finding it here. Laven takes a little bit of damage, but again, Laven taking damage is no no mystery here so far. He seems to be the attractor of most of the damage here. Yeah, they're just pretty much hard tunneling on Stone Knight here. Stone. Oh, yeah, he gets a CC here, but Amorak does not take very much damage Oh, the here. double CC! But Amorak block jumps out of the Grim Reaper and gets the grab onto Stone Knight, but Laven's right there to back his teammate up, gets the return grab onto Amorak. Stone Knight gets back up to deal some decent damage. Not enough to take anybody out, but enough to uh, make Amorak back off. Right, forces Amorak's V as well there, actually, so he's without that cooldown now. As Stone Knight, I believe, still has his. So one V down on the sides of Poof and Skirt. The no V's on the side of Team No Bully. Please yep. don't bully. Let's see. Don't bully this, me. They're playing a bit more cautious. Stone Knight's playing a bit safer now. Go, you know, kind of only going in when the CC lands, which is... Oh, got a knockdown on a Laven there, but he's going to just lay on the ground and think about what he's done. Charges straight into the Cardian Nightmare there. That would not but not been what I would have done there, Amorak, but still ended up working out for him there. Well, that is a pretty good opening for Grab Class because they're stuck in a, a immobile super armor, which is the easiest thing to grab. Right, out of. but one of the problems with that skill is Amorak gets put down here and 
comboed on the ground, but not enough oh. damage coming out of Lave. Don't he can't finish it. It's so low. Forced to be at 6% HP as the Mewa was right there to back him up. Amarek and uh, FG Rose just, or TG Rose. Oh, oh. double CC <laughs> out of Lave, and it's brilliant execution, but he's not it's doing any damage. Damage. It's just not enough. Stone Knight comes back in. Very low HP. It's going to be really risky and difficult for him to participate in these fights with such low HP at the moment. Laven trying to run interference and let his teammate heal up a bit. We have to commend Laven for this beautiful team fighting, but he doesn't have any damage here. He's getting opportunities. Look at that. Amorek just grabs Laven and runs away from him because he knows that there's no point. So they're just kind of trying to disable Laven for enough time to get onto Stone Knight. Yeah, I think if, if the only way this works is Laven needs to land a CC and Stone Knight has to be there to fall up right away. Speaking of, there's an opportunity, but Stone Knight is just too scared because he knows one bad CC against him and it's over. Right, he charges up that Grim Reapers, but that's really not what you want to be doing. You want to go in with the oh, Fire Nation, but he gets crap. grabbed by Amorak. They might be able to finish him off here, and in he fact, does. they do. Finally takes out Stone Knight and leaves Laven once again in the 1v2. Again, piloting this perfectly. CC's Amorak gets a grab here, gets the double Serpent Ascension, but doesn't do anything. It's like watching someone at Helms fight someone from Histria. Yeah, it, the that Serpent Ascension did, I think, actually zero damage. Uh, let's see if Laven can swap out. I believe that he does have... Ooh, that's a good smokescreen stun from Amrak there, forcing the V out of Laven. Uh, let's see if he is going to try and, you know, swap right, out his, his gear v there. Bit. He might have been able to get some time oh, to put some gear on. The, oh, it's 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 it did! It did! It did! It did! It did! No, he does not kill him! No, he misses the Jurassic Matters as uh, TG Rose gets back up. No V-pop from TG Rose, but P a V-pop. Everybody's super low. Laban's now turned the tides as he gets the CC by TG Rose. He turns it into 1v2, but he gets CC by Amarok and tank it out eventually. Nicely done. Good follow by Amarok to knock out Laban even oh, after that he tricky was gear swap. He playing so well, but he missed the final Jurassic Measures he would have needed to take that match.